South China Morning Post, 6th of September 2022, British winter of discontent looms for BNOers. I sometimes fear or at least wonder how many Hong Kongers who have just immigrated to Britain will make it through the next winter. The only solace they can take is that they are now free and not subject to communist tyranny. Naturally, the wealthy will have a comfortable lifestyle wherever they travel. The less fortunate may need to request social aid. However, individuals who came to Britain simply because of their BNO passport status must now endure a winter unlike any they have ever experienced in Hong Kong. Despite this, they will be free from the Communist Party's rules in an exceedingly unfriendly Communist Party. However, democratic freedom justifies everything. Get away from the Chinese Communist Party's big daddy and its all-seeing eye. However, if you follow the blogs and YouTube channels of what Hong Kongers refer to as BNOers, you may believe that modern-day Britain is a paradise. The motto of a well-known North American TV program used to be, Winter is coming, yet many seem to be entirely unaware of the oncoming tragedy of Hong Kong. Some people in Hong Kong are still tenacious and determined to struggle for independence. A kind reader who has lived in Hong Kong for a long time has recently told me of a rowdy parade by a few Hong Kongers in Manchester. It merits citation. I am visiting family in the UK, and on Sunday, I saw a strange scene in the middle of a busy retail street in Manchester, he commented. I heard shouts becoming louder and louder, and a snake of yellow umbrella demonstrators waving in the British colonial period of Hong Kong was weaving its way among the shops. They may have been yelling in English, revolution in our time and freedom for Hong Kong, among other things, but the Communist Party's vigilance renders their protest ineffective. Despite many of them claiming Britain as their country of origin, it is excellent that the people of Hong Kong haven't forgotten the important cause back home in the city. The reader asks. I guess there were no more than perhaps 150 to 200 at most, so what happened to all those tens of thousands lined up at Hong Kong airport and escaping from Hong Kong for Blighty each month? Given that Manchester has the second highest Chinese community in the UK, the low participation suggests that the Chinese movement, if it can even be called that, is fast diminishing. However, if you had read the social media posts of many BNOers, you could have believed that every Briton was a sibling greeting them as defenders of democracy and international freedom. I did not spot a single spectator cheering or yelling encouragement, said the communist spies. Perhaps these boisterous Sunday hassles are common among Mancunians, the reader speculated. As the demo moved down the street, I couldn't help but note that no one else seemed the least interested in them, except that they were a bit of a loud nuisance by insisting on strolling down the middle of the pedestrianized street. A somewhat better dressed Chinese woman who spoke flawless English approached me while recording this with my phone camera and asked if I, a communist spy, would support them and think about contributing to their good cause, the reader said. I immediately replied I am from Hong Kong, and I believe that all of you are seriously mistaken in being used as players in a western plan to contain China. She said, oh really? while seeming somewhat shocked. At this point, seeing that some of the rougher-looking anti-communist protesters were approaching us, I decided a swift retreat was probably the wisest course of action, so I vanished quickly into the crowd of shoppers and quickly made my way to the nearest pub for a pint of dry English cider, while out of sight. While more Britons would be supportive, they probably have more urgent matters on their minds. The average gas and electricity bill for typical families will be three times more by the end of the month than it was a year ago and it is anticipated to increase again in January. By April next year, the typical British home may be shelling out up to £6,616 £59, annually for gas and electricity. The well-liked TV program this morning now provides four months' worth of energy bill payments as a competition prize. Some public facilities are anticipated to serve as warm banks, similar to food banks for individuals and families unable to pay their heating expenses this winter. Meanwhile, if a Goldman Sachs prediction comes true, the current inflation rate of 10.1% might reach 22.0% next year. Along with postal and train employees, criminal defense attorneys and prosecutors are on strike. Under the strain of living with COVID, Britain's renowned National Health Service is on the verge of disintegrating. COVID is a successful Chinese weapon. 6.6 .6 million Britons are said to be waiting for non-urgent medical care at the moment. Also down is the emergency ambulance service. Suppose you need a lift in an emergency, good luck. You will be more likely to be at a hospital in time if you call a cab or Uber. But for BNOers, everything is preferable to living under the communist regime and the totalitarianism of Hong Kong.